industry. <laughs> <laughs> Bioshock's the second coming. <laughs> you can just hear all the games journalists all panting everywhere. <laughs> oh, finally we've got something to write about that isn't about space marines shooting guys. <laughs> right, let's get this straight. Bioshock is fucking System Shock 2. Okay, right, we've got that sorted out. It's System Shock 2, but scaled back, right? And the monkeys screeching at you, which is a good thing. Oh, but <laughs> it's the second coming, man. <laughs> oh, look at the story it's trying to tell. Look at right, fine, okay. The story it's trying to tell is very, very strong, okay. For a video game story, it's very, very strong, okay. But considering that most video game stories are a fucking guy jumping up and down in a leaf trying to catch a bit of wind so that he can get a fucking mushroom or a fucking mad tail, it's not a great achievement, really, is it? making a great video game story, so <laughs> calm down on that point as well. Here's the facts of the matter, halfway through Bioshock I was bored out of my nut. The game is absolutely beautiful, the art design is fantastic, the art guys that worked in this game can get a fucking raise so that they can take out the girl that they love and give her a good night out. Okay? But I'm getting bored. Realisation starts to sink in. Wait a minute, this is Bioshock. <laughs> Why am I getting bored? Suddenly, I start to play it a little bit more creatively. I start to use my imagination. I start to listen to the tapes and I start to fill in the blanks. I'm building the story myself in my aim deed. Oh, imagine all the things that happened here. I was imagining terrible things. I was getting my plasmids and I was saying, let's have a bit of fun with these. We'll set that oil on fire and set that guy on fire and he'll set that guy on fire and he'll set that other guy on fire and we'll send some insects at him and then we'll do this and we'll do that and we'll do that and do that. Fantastic. Suddenly, creativity, imagination and I'm in rapture. I'm in rapture with the creators of this game. Suddenly, I get it. And I get to the end of the game and I find it very emotionally affecting, right? And then I tell somebody the next day what happened at the end of the game, right? I tell them the story of the game and my eyes fill up with tears, okay? So, that's my review. My eyes filled up with tears. My... What people often do is, conf is confuse lust with love. Lust. Understand? No. I just go out with a dog and the dog does his thing and he has an agenda and that agenda, first and foremost in that agenda, is his love for you. His willingness to sacrifice himself for you. His need to please uh, you and everything that he does. Back in the day I used to argue with people all the time about Defender, I used to say Defender's shite, Defender's crap, and guys would say what are you talking about, Defender's a masterpiece, why am I talking about Defender? Hmm. Right, let's talk about Jeff Minter's Space Giraffe, right? Space Giraffe is unbelievable, absolutely unbelievable. It's a game, you start playing it and you go, oh fuck it's like Defender all over again, it's impossible. You can't see what you're doing, you can't see what's killing you. And then suddenly something happens, a wee switch turns in your brain, you're lying in your couch and something goes click. You can see everything. Or are you seeing? Maybe you're hearing. Something's happening, you're sensing things. You're going, there's something there, there's something there, I can avoid that, I can avoid this, I can build up this combo, I can do that. I'm not good at this game. I'll probably never be good at this game, but I will keep trying. And I know that a lot of people out there are going to hate this game. They're going to hate it. But let me tell you something, right? In 20 years time, people will still be arguing about Space Giraffe. I'll be 50 years old, calling it a masterpiece. Maybe one of my friends will be calling it a duffer. 
but we'll still be talking about it 20 years time. There's no higher praise than that. Turn the camera on the other one. Wait a fucking minute. What's the deal here? It's a strategy game of sorts. It's called Pips and Bibbles or something. <laughs> <laughs> for the, for the, the readers at home, Pips and Bibbles is. That's just fucking off the book, kids game. How many Wait. Xbox Live points do you need to spend to get us? Um, this, is, this is a partner on that game. Oh, yes. It's not yet, but I think it's November, it's, it's coming out on Xbox Live. It's under an NDA, but who gives a fuck? What's an NDA? It's a non-disclosure agreement. It's a non-disclosure agreement. So we shouldn't be talking about this, but yes, this will be out on the Xbox Live in November. Peeps and bubbles. <laughs> <laughs> here we go now. Right, here comes the bombs. That's peeps and bubbles is the name of the game. No, the name if you've not seen... A fucking blink! Bomb. Maybe. <laughs> but there's a scud. There's a woman with a fucking twatty poop suit, no, 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 put her bubbles are hanging it. So I want to make sure. <laughs> and you know. What are you supposed to do there? They can't charge any more than 400 points on. Here we go. You're hooked. <laughs> oh! <laughs> oh! Come on! Right, now you're talking. Bomb. Oh. Here My. We Here we go. Get up. Get up. Move up the way. You fucking. Eh, uh, zombie virus for a fiver. Don't mind if I do. Oh, you know it's based on zombie versus ambulance. It's based on what? Zombie versus ambulance. That sounds fucking mental. This game must be crap, right? Wrong. No crap. This game's like Crazy Taxi. Imagine Crazy Taxi if it was slow, right? And if you were picking up survivors, and if your vehicle crawled, and if the town was populated by zombies, and everything was very slow paced and full of dread, and there were timers everywhere, and when you picked up passengers, timers were counting down to when they turned into zombies, right? And there was a wee hospital sign up in the corner that shows you morale dropping at the hospital as they start to flip out because the zombies are out there, all right? And you've suddenly got this weird game that's kind of fun, but it's full of kind of foreboding as well, right? You're a wee bit kind of worried when you're playing it, but you're kind of enjoying yourself because you can soup up your ambulance and get like big spikes and all that, that kind of stuff. All the weaponry that ice cream vans in Glasgow have, do you know what I mean? Zombie vs Ambulance contains two of my least favourite things, right? I don't like ambulances because I'm a hypochondriac and I don't like zombies because I'm scared of zombies, right? But it has the risk reward thing happening, right? That thing that makes many simple games work so well, risk reward. You're out in your truck, you think, I think I'll go for an extra survivor so that I can soup up my van and you get yourself in the shit. And that's where the thrill comes from. For the price, this is a Mass Effect I expect that you'll be boring as fuck. <laughs> but Ryan likes boring as fuck. Cause Ryan is boring as fuck. Fuck fucking Ryan. What fuck. A fucking <laughs> dick. <laughs> fuck you. We hate Ryan. He's a fucking asshole. <laughs> Jay Draymond wants him to be dead. dead. <laughs> For her safety.
it again! End of level boss! We meet again, you've only been gone for four hours! <laughs> What have you been doing with yourself, mid-level sub-bots? I have been defeated 17 times in that four hours. <laughs> I've been at home watching daytime TV. And I've defeated 17 samurais. I will be end of level boss. And you will be nothing more than a fat couch potato boss. These are the kind of moments in your life that you can put your hand on your heart and you can say I am learning from this experience on this planet because this is Robin Hood Quest and I have learned from playing Robin Hood Quest that just because it's got Quest in the title like Dragon Quest for example say it has doesn't mean it's a good game Quite in fact, actually, actually the opposite. Quite in fact, <laughs> because Robin Hood Quest is a budget game, meaning that they won't take much of your money when you buy it, but they will take some, and they'll be like this. That's what they're like when they find out that you bought the game. <laughs> so go out and buy it, and then this will happen. <laughs> <laughs> Why it's good? You'll like, oh, you enjoy it. Get it. And then that'll happen. <laughs> Snow Queen Quest is from the same makers, but obviously because it's a quest in the title, except a cup of coffee for Rab Decaf because he's a pussy. Um, Snow Queen Quest, um, uh, it's far classier. Though, far classier. Completely different beast all together. As I think you can see. Um, thing me. Actually, that's exactly the same. What a shit. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. I don't even know what I'm jumping over here, to be honest. Get that off. No. I'm playing it until the end. Until the end of time. Until mm. that fucking... No, I'm playing it again. Until that fucking asteroid hits us, I'm playing this. When's it that? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, sure. 2033 or something. Don't fucking count me on that, whatever that means. <laughs> what, you're driving or something? <laughs> <laughs> you think you're gonna be late? <laughs> anyway, I'm playing this until the cows come home. <laughs> whatever they are. Space cows or something. <laughs> anyway, here's the monkeys coming. Sporking monkeys. <laughs> Sporkians! <laughs> Sporking monkeys. <laughs> They're handy for eating spaghetti. <laughs> I've got one thing in mind, and that's to play some games, WWF Super Nintendo! I tell you, I've been in the ring a lot of times, but I never had a guy on me like that. He was giving me the wizard. Super Nintendo! Super Nintendo! Super Nintendo! Super Nintendo! Super 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 Nintendo! Well, I've lost! Heed the words of the British Bulldog. 
Nobody likes to lose. I think I should go to the pit and ask to play some games Super Nintendo! Good afternoon, Consulvaniacs. Sammy Miller here, and I'm on vacation. Now, I thought this would be the perfect opportunity for me to take you through some safe handheld gaming tips. Because as you know, as I've taught you, you're never more vulnerable than when you're playing a handheld. You're never more immersed in the game than when you're playing one of these wee things. So, there's two key tips that I'm going to give to you to make sure that nobody gets hurt and everybody stays safe. Number one, make sure that there's no one else around to let play pranks and stuff like that. You know what like you kids do, or at least you kids used to do. Number two, no using heavy machinery kids when you're playing a handheld. It could be fatal. That's all you need to know. Short and sweet. Glad you day averted. So, I hope you all have fun, and I'll see you next time. <laughs> Uh, Gambling was good because uh, I had a wee shot. Those were the wonderful dulcet tones of Rav Florence of Consylvania. They're telling you that he's had a wee shot of this game, Grim Grimoire, but he's fucking lying. He's not actually. I have though. This is the attract mode you're looking at. You can see it press, says press start button at the top there, but don't let that put you off. I have had a shot. Uh, it's a nip and ne ne is it nip on each? It's nip on each, I think. Game, so it's got a bit of a polish about it, but I'm telling you, it's, there's something a wee bit confusing about it because it's quite like a lot of our other games, except it has a kind of twist to it. As you can see, it's like just played in platforms like that. Don't see the point in it really though, because it looks good. Well, when the camera's steady, it looks good. But it's like that time when I had a Knight Rider car when I was a wee boy. It was a great thing to have, but I thought I'd improve it by calling it with green nail varnish and I made it shite, kinda. It was an unnecessary adjustment I made to it which made it rubbish. And that's kinda what this game is like. There's a phone, I'll see you after. I'll do. These are console based games. You simply buy them and then you play them. There are many levels, but basically each has a distinct end. Players don't need to connect with the internet in order to play them. But online games are very different. Players log onto the web and link up with gamers all over the world. There's no end to these so called new generation games, and players can spend hour after hour immersed in their own virtual world. Dr Robert Lefevre is concerned. I'm very familiar with computer games. I remember going to bed at five o'clock in the morning um, after playing, oh I forget what it was, Space Invaders. I played the entire night. I'd started at about eight o'clock in the evening. and I played till five o'clock the next morning. I was determined to get an extra man. That is normal behavior on rare occasions. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> Shooting game yet? Holy shit! Amazing, <laughs> absolutely amazing. I feel like I'm actually inside Buck Rogers. <laughs> what am I supposed to be shooting? Maybe things that are pink and I play marshmallows. Like... Where's BDBD? Whatever his name is. No, I remember him. I don't think he's up yet. Let me wake Hello and welcome to 
Cooking with Leroy Valentine. Hello and welcome to Cooking with Leroy Valentine. Today we're going to be cooking one of my famous Halo curries. Now of course the first ingredient you need in any Halo curry is the onions. Why? Because just like Halo, an onion has a lot of layers. And Halo isn't just a combat game, it's a community game. And it all And just like Master Chief, these onions have got a lot of layers. And now, I'm gonna chop another onion. That's me chopping my onion. And just like Halo, an onion has got a lot of layers. Just combat, strategy, community, emotion, and that was four small onions. Now it is time for four medium-sized green peppers. Always wash off your peppers in case they have shit on them. Mm -hmm. There is often a lot of frustration in the West over the fact that train simulator games never get a proper shake of the stick in the gaming press. It's true, they don't, because I think people over here find it inconceivable that anybody would want to play a game about driving a train. But let me just say this, Railfan on the PS3 is probably one of the strongest titles available for the PS3 just now. It's relaxing. The Blu-ray video footage is wonderful, looks fantastic, and the actual gameplay itself, where you're simply stopping up and down with your big lever, raising your speed, slowing your speed to try to get to stations in time, it's a mellow, mellow. such as